When using Google Docs in the classroom, it is often difficult to make sense out of the somewhat cryptic emails that the students have in Los Angeles Unified with my mail uh, and associating that with the student name. Uh, it's somewhat easier if you only have 20 students or so, but if, uh, for instance, a secondary teacher may have 180 to 200 students. And so as a means of doing that, uh, this is going to be the first video in a series of the, in the Survive in the Classroom with Google Contacts. Uh, to do that, we're going to create a form so we can gather that data either from ourselves or from our students. Let's get started. Okay, what I'm looking at now is uh, my Google Docs homepage, which you get when you, when you log in uh, with your Google account. Uh, I already created a folder. I can create new that I call example classroom and I have nothing in it yet. So now I want to create a form so I can gather student email information. And so I'll go to create new. I'm going to click on new form. And it opens a window for me in form editor. Now a Google form is nothing more than a spreadsheet and uh, well actually it's not a spreadsheet it's a uh, it's a data input device for a spreadsheet so it's creating the spreadsheet in the background as I create the form I'm going to title this form uh, Mr. Lenhart's student contacts and then I can put some other instructions in here. I may do that later, but let's go into the questions. Now the first question, they give you a, a two questions kind of set up as templates. Uh, we're going to go in and change this. So the first question, I'm in editing mode, and my first question is to uh, put in first name. So I'm gonna want, I want first name. And then help task, I could put, please type your first name, but most of the students understand that that's exactly what I want. The question type, I have a, a bunch of different question types. For this one, I actually want them to type in uh, their first name. And then I'm going to make this a required question because I don't want them to submit with it being blank. And so first name, text, and I'm going to say done. So I have my first one. Now question number two, I need to notice when I scroll over it, it I get a bar here and it shows me some editing. Uh, this is the edit tool, this is the duplicate it uh, tool, and then here is the trash it, I don't need it, delete tool. So I'm going to choose edit, and on question two, I'm going to put, bet you already guessed it, last name. And this will also be text, and I want to make this a required question. So I select done. Now I have a few, obviously I want to get their email, so I can go to add an item and I'm going to choose a text type question. Now here's kind of important, Google, in Google Contacts it recognizes the headers which are our questions um, and puts them in the appropriate field. I need to make sure I use terminology that Google's using in their contacts form. For instance, if I flip over to my contacts, here is a new contact and you can see the fields that Google offers. Now, they do understand first name, last name and put it in the right position in the name field. But if I need email, I need to use the word email, not student email, not my mail, email. And then any other area here I could add to. Uh, but let me go back to the forms now. And my question title is going to be email. In my help te text, I'm going to write please enter your my mail account or my, you know, my, my mail account completely. It would probably be helpful if I actually spelled completely right since I can't type so completely. And, uh, and then I'm going to put an example in there which would be uh, uh, Joe, 
actually, no, they don't have names, do they? So it would be jxs at mymail.lausd.net. I'm typing that in so it's an example. Uh, actually, it's jxs. Let's put one, two, three uh, after that since that's the format that they use. And that's text. And I want to make it required. Now, I wish I could have uh, Google Forms check to make sure it's a valid email address or put, the t put it in twice and have it compare like some of the fancier sites. That's not a feature that's available right now. Uh, as a teacher, we'll need to just view that uh, quickly and see if it visibly matches what, uh, what, it, what the student email needs to be. And I'm going to say finished here and done. And you notice here's my instructions right there with my example. Now, I can add a few more things that I want to know. If I want address, or I want their phone number, or, or certain things I want to keep in my contacts. Uh, right now, I'm going to actually ask for something that I really want, and that's period. And since I only have, uh, let's say, six periods, uh, I'm going to have them choose off a list so I don't have some of them writing the word out, some of them uh, entering the number, uh, some of them putting things that have no, nothing to do with period. Uh, which would confuse your contacts list. So I'm going to go into Add Item, and I'm going to add Choose from a List. So I'm going to put Period, and Choose from a List, and my first one's going to be Period 1. Then I click down below, and Period 2. Period three. Whoops. Period four. Let's scroll down here. Period five. Period six. And so I have that list. I'm going to say make this a required answer also and say done. And notice now I have they choose off a list. And that just gives me consistency in, in the data they're entering. And then one more item I'm going to add, which uh, just for fun, uh, we're going to do check boxes. And I'm going to add uh, what is your favorite subject. What is your favorite subject? Now, the reason I choose checkboxes is because checkboxes give me an opportunity to ask a question where they can check more than one. And so uh, probably here I can put check all that apply. And so for first option, I'm going to put, now since I'm a language arts teacher, I'm actually going to put uh, English. And then for the next subject, I'll put math. And let's see, let's see, history. And um, uh, music. I probably should put science in there. So science. And let's put art. And for my athletes in the group, I'll put PE. And then I'm going to add an other. Okay, so did I add other? Okay, here. And okay, so I have an other, and they can actually type in their own answer if. Uh, if, if they choose to. This is not that critical because I'll show you where this kind of data will go in the notes section in the bottom of contacts, but it gives us a chance to get other information into the contacts. And I'm going to say make this a required question also, and I'll say done.